what's up guys welcome back to the channel well, as you can see we're over here in the office uh i brought aaron with me and we're over here just talking about end of the year stuff going over a few things and i want to share kind of like a i don't know end of the year review of all three crops and uh what they made what was best uh you know things that we learned or, or things that you know varieties that we, we we liked but uh we even brought old molly dog with us she's over eating a bone but before we do that i want to start by uh mentioning a little bit about precision planning precision planning has their winter conference coming up here um it's coming up in december january okay we'll share the dates with you here in just a minute but what the winter conference is is basically just a, a rundown of all the new products that are going to be unveiled and the products that they already have in their lineup uh they're just showing you you know everything that they have in their in their portfolio and uh, how they work and uh you know what might fit your operation you know the best but uh I know I'm going to be there. I'm going to the one in Memphis, and uh, I will be there for a couple of days to help uh, do a little filming on my side and uh, just kind of show it on my channel and show what the Winter Conference is really all about. You know, I went there back in the summer and um, went to their facility in Tremont and uh, or my Pontiac. Was it Pontiac? Yeah, it was Pontiac. But anyhow went there and uh done a little filming there and y'all saw that you know earlier in the year but uh i'm gonna hand the cam camera over to erin where she can show you the computer screen we got to pull it up on the computer and uh show you the dates show you what it's all about show you some locations they're going to be at and just kind of go over that a little bit right quick so here we go all right guys um the winter conference of course if you go to precision planning's website um then you can click on events um go down to their winter conference um it'll there's an event agenda also a register now um you'll have to click before um going um it also gives some information about the precision um going to be lots of engineers agronomists product experts there um, also, you'll get to chat with other farmers um, and talk to the precision planning employees. If you click find a location, you will see all the locations listed. It tells um, the date, uh, the times, and how many seats are left. Just lots and lots. Of course, the Memphis, Tennessee is January the 17th. That is the one that Eric will go to. Um, so several locations, several chances to go. Um, it looks like most of them are on January 17th, January 18th, a um, couple of January 23rd. The one in Illinois, of course, is the longest. It goes the 16th to the 19th. Um, you simply just click register, um, and you'll register, select your registration type, and, I mean, you guys know how to do this. You've done it a million times. So, but anyway, that, if you'll just go to their website um, and click on winter conference it will give you all the information you need to uh, register and find the location that's closest to you all right guys y'all y'all understood all that um there's multiple locations i mean you shouldn't miss this uh if even if you don't have this on your planner if even if you're not a precision person with your planner I would highly recommend you to go to one of these i thought i knew everything about planners and y'all know how peculiar i am about planners when i went to the one this summer i learned that i was making a few mistakes that i didn't realize i was making and uh I, I don't care how good you are you don't know it all and i learned that real quick so i would advise you to go to one of these set through it uh you know listen to what they have to say because they're they're very very knowledgeable about uh mistakes that have been made and you can correct yourself on it and i i just can't say enough about it 
it, it was a great experience for me and uh i look forward to going to this one again and uh seeing what the, what new products they have coming out but anyhow molly's over here running wild no she's not running wild she's just he's begging she's loving <laughs> happy to be here but anyhow let's uh let's talk about the crops let's start off with soybeans all right guys i mean i'm not i'm not scared to show you my stuff i i i don't hide nothing i don't sugarcoat anything i'll gladly show you my numbers i told you this year all year long i would gladly gladly show you and expose all this stuff that this is not fo not folklore that it is the right yield data all right my soybeans the total yield for the whole farm was 83 bushel. Now then, we had two farms that made 86 bushel. Uh, we had two varieties. We had an Asgro 48 XFF2, and we had a Pioneer 47A64. Now we planted this Pioneer for several years now. It's done extremely well for several years. Asgro had this new bean right here. They said it was a racehorse. I wanted to try it. Well, it was the racehorse because it, it beat the Pioneer's hand us down. But I'm going to spin the camera around and let you see this. I'm going to cover up the farm name, but I will show you all the numbers right there. The bottom one is the total whole farm. All those others are, the whole, are just each farm individually. So, soybeans. There's a couple takes out of soybeans to make high yields like this. Number one, and this is the most important, plant date. You need to be planting soybeans instead of planting corn. Get these soybeans in the ground as quick as possible. They can take a lot more of this cold, wet nastiness than corn can. You don't lose as much yield like you do in corn. But what you do gain with the soybeans is you're capturing more sunlight. You, you get these beans blooming before the summer solstice. And that's, that's 10 to 12 bushel right there, off the top. If you have them blooming by the summer solstice, you can guarantee you 10 to 12 bushel right off the top, right there. Now then, I run in furrow and two by two on my beans because number one, I don't think they make enough nitrogen. So I put some nitrogen down with my two by two. My in furrow is basically just the Compass Max and that's about it. I mean, I keep it simple, stupid. And uh, the, the, the next trick to it is we do burn these beans back. Y'all see me burn them back. That makes them branch out a lot more and add some more pods. I didn't get a good burn like I normally do uh, this year. Uh, it just didn't it just didn't happen like I wanted it to happen. It started raining thereafter and uh, they took off back to growing. Uh, we did get some more branching but not like I'd really hope to. But still, you can't complain about 86 bushel soybeans. I don't, I don't care who you are. But another product too is Terramar. Y'all have heard me talk a lot about Terramar from Agerson. I think it's huge in the soybeans. You're taking that stress off that plant and, and, and just checking that box, so to speak, of alleviating any stress on that plant to where that plant has nothing to do but to worry about is just capturing sunlight. That's it. And uh, the other thing is just make sure you keep them clean. As far as disease, we spray a couple of fungicides, keep them clean. Uh, yeah, I can't. Fungicides also cool that plant down and take some more stress off. So those are the key takeaways from from soybean crop. I mean, it's. You know, a lot of the guys around here, they plant soybeans kind of as a secondary crop. They just, ah, 
we have to plant them just because we can't plant corn in there or we can't plant cotton in there we're going to just mud these soybeans in here or whatever that's the wrong mentality to have you need to think about these things the beans made more money for us than any other crop we had hands down simply because we didn't have a lot into them uh all we done was kept them clean kept them disease free and let them do their thing that's all we done and uh that made us more money than any other crop that we grew simply for that fact <laughs> what is it molly hmm you t say hello to the viewers ah oh, that's a pretty good girl all right so now let's talk about corn here's the golden goose everybody wants to talk about so let's talk about corn all right we had a couple of varieties here we had 6744 we had a dynagro 55v c80 we had a 6599 and this 6270 that y'all heard me talk a lot about up there at the grain bins so let's talk about the 60, 6270 while i got it on my mind the one thing i noticed about it was it did not like to be put on marginal ground you better put it on the best dirt you got or it's going to fail and fail miserably the leaf structure on this plant was nothing like i'd ever seen before it big old leaves on it uh just crazy looking now then it made 280 bushel and all this is dry land corn there's no irrigation here zero this is all dry land so 62 cents you made 280 bushel 65.99 we planted that before it's a great corn uh does really well on kind of meter ochre land uh it made 268 bushel the dc the the 55 vc80 the dynagro corn this is the second year i've planted that corn i don't think i'll be planting any more of it simply because it just it's just not there it, it it's made for poor ground uh and that's where we had it i mean which we had some on some pretty good ground and you know it it was all right uh some farms were better than others uh here we had it on one farm made 267 but we had it on another farm made 292 so i mean it, it's it it's there it's just it's just a tough corn to try to get it out of it uh 67.44 it's tried and true around here i've set a lot of records with 67.44 um we've grown it for several years now it, it is a high management corn if you don't manage it if you're not one of them high management guys i would advise you not to plant it because it will it will fail and fail miserably too uh it takes a lot of management to grow this corn now then i don't think i'm gonna grow any more of it for this fact and this fact only it will get on the ground uh the stalk quality is just not there it, it <laughs> it's kind of like putting a 300 bushel ear on a 100 bushel stalk so to speak um it just you can just blow it knock it over but i don't think we're going to plant any more of it we're going to search for a new hybrid to take its place and uh, i think it's time we planted it for about four or five years now so uh I, it's we're going to find something to take its place but i'm going to spin the camera around here in just a second and let you see these yields the whole farm average all the corn acres was 267. I, I think that's pretty remarkable because what's the average yield right here, Aaron? 180? Probably, yeah. I mean, you're talking about the county average for 180 bushel, and we're 267. The county, the FSA county average is like 165, I think. All right, y'all heard her. The FSA average is 165. And we're setting it 267. So, I mean, that's pretty stout. All right, so I'm going to show you the highest yield we had. And, and y'all saw this corn on the videos. Uh, it was a farm in Alabama uh, down there where uh, 
the Yamaha was running up to 340, 348 bushel. Uh, the farm ended up making 308, is what it made. But I'm going to turn the camera around and uh, show you these yields. Well, like I said, and the I, only thing we're covering up is the farm names and the farm yeah, numbers. That's I, the only thing we're covering up. I'm just covering up my farm names and the farm numbers. That's the only thing I'm covering up. So you can see the varieties right here. And the one I've got highlighted is the highest one, 308. That's the one in Alabama. And there's the whole farm average. But you can see, I'm going I'm to run the camera up real slow so you can see every one of them. But, and there's the worst one, 234. Let me see what farm it's on. Yeah, that's exactly. I understand why that one's that low. That's one of them ridge tops out there on the ridge. That didn't get rain. Yeah, didn't get no rain out there. But that's pretty remarkable, guys. I I, I don't care what you say. For the, for the for this area, I mean, that's stout, really stout. Uh, uh, I'm very pleased with that. So let's talk about some things that guys to there to here. Number one, put the right hybrid on the right dirt. That's what you got to start off right there. And uh, you know, we rip our corn ground, we rip our cotton ground, we rip whatever we can rip, when we can rip, and make sure it's ripped. That's another key. But, you know, I planted this corn in an average population of 32,000, 32,500, somewhere along in there. So we probably ended up with 31,000 rather than there. I'd say rough and dirty. But, you know, in my, my real high management stuff, I'll run it up to 36,000, 38,000. Uh, I have one of them at 38, have one of them at 36, have one of them at 34, 5. Uh, you know, that the high yield there in Alabama, that 308 bushel, it was planted at 38,000. Uh, another one there, let's see. The grain bins, that corn there was planted at 34,500 is exactly what that was planted at, May 280. Uh, that was at 6270, 280 bushel. Um, let's see what that needs. All right, guys, I'm going to try to take back off here. Sorry, I was rudely interrupted by the camera cutting off. But uh, Sylvia's, you know, it, that was the other farm in Alabama, May 268 bushel. So, um, you know, the, that corn there was planted at 36,000 is what it was planted at. So, you know, I don't think population, let me back up. Yeah, population has some things to do with it, but you also better have, if you're going to plant 38,000, you better have the fertility for 38,000. But anyhow, beside the point, uh, Terramar. I can't say enough about that product. Also in corn, uh, it took a lot of stress off of this corn. Uh, this corn had some high, high heat uh, in the middle of the summer here, and we, we kept applying the Terramar to it, cooling this corn down, also with some fungicides as well. Um, you know, my buddy Dylan Joyce, I, he's been using it too. I talked him into it. He's seen results from it also. He loves it absolutely loves it and uh anybody that i've introduced this product into has said the same thing so i would advise you this next growing season at least take a check at it uh you know look at it and, and check it out uh do your research about it i wouldn't farm without it i'll just tell you i think it's that good of a product but guys y'all need to be careful with these snake oils there is a lot of them out there uh, it's hard for us growers to weed through them. You know, I will tell you what works and what don't work on my farm. 
And like I told you before, I will not bash them. I will just tell you if it works or if it don't work. Uh, there's no sense in bashing them. Uh, it may work somewhere else. Uh, we tried the product uh, source from Sound Ag. You know, it's supposed to be the next big thing. We saw zero results. We actually lost bushels. So, that's about all I'm gonna say on corn. I don't wanna make this a real long, long drug out video. So let's talk about cotton. And it all hasn't been ginned. Yeah, we're sitting here right now in the gin office and the gin's still running. Yeah, I can hear it running in the background. Uh, the yard is super full still. How much do they like trucking it all in here? Um, we're actually working now on my brother's and mine and my dad's cotton, which is always the last. I think Eric's got 40, no, oh, probably 25 left in the field. My brother's probably got 300 loads left in the field. Um, as far as customers, we've got them all hauled in. We've got some in Murfreesboro. We've got a, probably about 60 loads, 70 loads of other customers that'll be hauled with my trailers. So we're, we're about to get everything hauled. Um, this morning we had 502 loads on, 502 loads of four on the yard. So we, we got quite a ways to go. Gonna be after the first year before we get done. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just been one heck of a cotton crop grown here this year. Most everybody uh, that we've ginned out so far has ginned out three and a half bales plus. Uh, we have had a couple farmers that have hit four bales and a little bit above. Uh, but I'm gonna go over some of my cotton yields with you right quick. Uh, I don't know if you're interested in cotton or not, but if you are, uh, uh, I'm gonna go over it real quick uh, and won't drag it out. So, uh, like I said, I still got some gin. So just take that into aspect, guys. This is what we have right now. And I'm gonna, let's see, we had a, we had three varieties here. We had a 2012, a 2038, and a 2141. The 2038 is the racehorse. It's it's the it's sort of like a long season uh, kind of bred for Florida, so to speak. Uh, that was one of the top yielders. Uh, let's see which one. Uh, yeah, Greasy Cove. All right. Greasy Cove ginned out 3.45 bales to the acre, so that's 1,684 pounds to the to the to the. If you take out the deer damage acres, it would. Oh yeah. It would yeah. make close to four. Yeah. Bales. yeah. If I would have you know counted the deer damage out, which you can't really do it because it's part of the farm too, but if you take that out of the aspect, it would make four bales an acre. Um, they eat up about five, five to six acres up there. So uh, yeah, it was it was a really good cotton. But I'm gonna spin the camera around, let you look the yields over, uh, and then we'll discuss them just a little bit. But you can see there's the varieties, there's the acres, there's the lint, there's the poundage. And there's the bales to the acre. I had Ann converted all the bales to acre. We do we do pounds per acre here. Farmers like to do bales per acre, so average 3.10. This is still what I have left sitting here to gin. So there you go. But I I just wanted to make this video real quick for you guys and uh grades if you okay yeah okay so yeah i know some of you guys have asked about grades uh, i'll let aaron go over the grades this gin has really good grades here compared to some of these neighboring gins uh we've had some customers already praising uh, these grades but I'll, I'll give the camera to aaron right quick and let her go over grades right quick all right so out of the bales eric's had ginned he's had 1124. i know a lot of this is going to be foreign language to you grain farmers but this is how we get paid um a simple way to look at it you see that where it says average loan the base 
loan is 52 cents. Anything above 52 cents is a premium. Right now, Eric has 1,100 bales going in at 57 cents. Lots of strict middling, which is great. Um, color's good, strength is good. The one thing that we can control here at the gin is the leaf. Um, that has a lot to do with us. We're right now, we're, Eric's is averaging 2.7. Um, you don't get docked to anything over four. So um, leaf has been really good. I mean, no um, low mic, no, a little bit of three low mic bells. It's probably some where he picked in Greasy Cove where the deer damage was. Um, but other than that, everything has been great. Um, over the 34,000 bales we've ginned here so far, I looked this morning, we're averaging 57 cents going into the loan, which is unheard of. Um, it's crazy. Most farmers, most years will have, you know, low mics, high mics, depending on the weather. Of course, like I said, the leaf is the only thing here at the gym that we have much control over. A lot of this has to do with growing conditions. Um, when they defoliate it, if they pick it wet, if they, you know, a lot of that doesn't have anything to do with us. So, but for all of y'all that know about grades, this is what we're, this is where we're at right now. So, all right, guys, I hope that, you know, a lot of the cotton guys will understand that. Uh, I know a, a lot of my grain farmers up north have, have asked a lot about cotton, and they really enjoyed the videos that I put out. You know, I tried to be as educational as I could while trying to run a cotton picker, guys. Y'all have to bear with me because um, this year you could not see the ground for the cotton. It looked like just a sea of cotton, and you couldn't see the ground. And it was hard for me to do a lot of explanations, but I tried to be as thorough as I could. Um, we've had a lot of guys from up north ask about cotton and the process. It's shift change. Okay, all right. I just heard the gin cut off. It's shift change. Sorry. Everybody panics when the gin cuts off. But anyhow, uh, you know, I wanted to be as thorough with all of that as I could. Uh, if you have any questions, just comment down below, ask them, and I'll, I'll gladly try to get the answer to them. Uh, I want I, I to I also tell y'all, please, please, go to the merch store. The holidays are among us. What is that site again? Farm Merch Bin? Yeah, farmmerchbin.com. I never you, can remember see that. How do you see how many times he yeah. relies on his wife for things like those grades? He has no idea of really what that is. Hey, sell it. That's all he I care. No, he he does none of the selling. None of the if something happens to me, guys. Someone's gonna have to come help him because all, he is gonna be. The only thing I care about is if the bills is paid and we can play again next year. That's all I care about. <laughs> These days, two things. As long as my family's provided for and the bills are paid and we can play again next year, that's that's the only thing I worry about. The rest is water on the bridge. That's the way I see it. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm too laid back when it comes to that. Uh, but that's, that's my own fault. I've always been that way. Uh, I worry about growing it. She worries about showing it. That's, that's all I can tell. That's, that's, that's about how it goes. I mean... Uh, not I, just for him. I couldn't sell a bale of cotton every, today if every, I had to. Every farmer, I mean, everyone here. Uh, I've usually, sometimes I hit it and sometimes I miss it. But, I mean, just like it's selling grain, you can't put all your eggs in one basket. You can't do it all the same. You just. I, I mean, I, I couldn't sell a bale of cotton today if I had to. I wouldn't even know where to start. <laughs> wouldn't know. But, you know, that's 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 the good thing about us you know i know how to do my job and she knows how to do hers and we don't ever cross contaminate i don't come in here and try to tell her how to do her job and she don't tell me how to do mine wait 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 wait, wait. now sometimes i have to hold the reins yeah but i'm just saying well, yeah, yeah i don't come in here and say hey here sell it all no, no i just I, I, I don't do that never have never will i mean it's she knows the loopholes to jump through like the back of her hand so i let her handle that and uh you know take care of all that but y'all go to that website and uh all right guys like i saying again before i was rudely interrupted again y'all go to the merch store pick you up some hats like these you see this one i'm wearing 
Uh, I don't know if the camera picks it up or not. But pick you up some hats. Pick you up some shirts. Uh, Farmmerchbin.com. Uh, I looked at it today. There is a lot of stuff on there. Uh, a lot. And, and every little bit helps support our channel. And uh, if you don't like my stuff, look at some of Dylan Joyce's stuff or Matt Griggs' stuff or Russ Thomas' stuff. Uh, you know, support them guys' channel. If, if, if you don't want to buy my stuff, buy some of their stuff. It, it, it helps buy these expensive cameras like this one I'm holding now that's got ran over. Yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to see the line in it or not, but our area of the camera just died, so I picked this one up. This is the one that's been crashed. They got run over by the gator. Yeah, somebody forgot to get it off the side of the gator. But, anyhow, it helps buy these expensive cameras, guys. Uh, we drop them, we break them, they get dirty, they don't work. You, you know, batteries, batteries, batteries. You, it's just a long story, guys, about you know all this stuff and it does cost money to do this so every dime that i affiliate through that or or you know anything else goes back into this channel i want this channel to be as educational as possible uh, showing the do's and don'ts the wrongs the rights of growing all these crops and uh, my, my my way might not be the correct way, but it's working for us and has worked very successful, as you can see from all the data here. And this, uh, and guys, uh, you know, not a lot of people would sit here and show you their, their, their freaking yield data like this. And the only thing I blocked out was my farm names. Uh, I feel like that's my business and nobody else's. Uh, that's the only thing I blocked out. The rest of it is 100% factual. And it come right off this computer screen we printed it out before I sat down here. So, uh, you know, not a lot of people would sit in there and show you their yields like this, but I opened mine up. I want you to see them. Uh, I'm not ashamed of them. And it, uh, honestly, if we had failed, I'd still show them to you. Uh, that's how open I'm gonna be. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to hide anything from you guys because I think that's just kind of, I don't know, skittish and childish and, and, and you know, you can't sit up here and be the big dog and then and, and not open your portfolio and show them the proof. So that's what I intended to do, and that's what we've done. That's what we want to do just tonight is come over here while the, the door wasn't swinging wide open over here and it's quiet and uh, just show you guys all this right here. But I want to... Uh, Wish every one of y'all a Merry Christmas. Uh, maybe we'll get some more episodes out here before the holidays. I know the episodes are going to slow down, guys. There's there's only so much you can film in the shop. And I, 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 what I'm filming, what I've been filming today, uh, us working in the shop, I feel like it's boring. And I don't, I don't know. You may enjoy it. You tell me if you enjoy it, and we'll keep doing it. I'll keep putting it out there. But if you don't. Let me know, because I don't want to put something out there that you don't enjoy, because uh, we're going to be fixing a lot of equipment. We've got uh, to rebuild the planter completely. Uh, that's going to be a big project. We're going to start it after Christmas. I'm not going to start it and then not, you know, kind of take off for Christmas and get in between it. So we're going to wait till after Christmas. Then we're going to start it, get on it, and I'll explain every bit of that planter to you guys, what, how to set it up correctly all the specs that people overlook that make big differences on a planner i'm going to show you how to set up a planner correctly from the start to the finish all the way so if you're interested in that be looking for that uh we've also got to put a radiator in our old 4455 uh i ordered one today so we got to put a radiator in that tractor and uh we've got to rebuild a bush hog get it new blades on it and all that so uh who knows we may try to clean it on 4455 up some get some of oil leaks stopped and we might put some green paint on it you never know but uh we've also got to finish our office and the rest of our shop so stuff like that right there guys but y'all comment down below what y'all want to see what you want to see if you want to see the planter uh being rebuilt or if you want to see the older tractors being worked on or 
you know, you you tell me what you want to see, and I promise you I will try to film it and get it out there for you guys to enjoy it. But please, please, guys, go to that merch store and get you some merch. I know I'm going to get on there tonight. I'm going to order me some hoodies, some T-shirts, because uh, wintertime is, a, uh, is among us right here. Uh, it's pretty cool this morning, like 25 or 27 this morning. Uh, big old frost, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm slap out of hoodies, so I'm going to have to order me some hoodies. But y'all check that out, and uh, don't forget about Agerson, guys. <laughs> I'm going to say this, and I'm going to close. Y'all need to check out Agerson. They have several, several products. Uh, the, they're the ones that make the Terramar product. Uh, they also m make the product called Accomplish Max that I've ran for three years now. Uh, I will not run a planner without having Accomplish Max in furrow uh, in 2 by 2 also. Uh, th uh, through the corn, through the cotton, through it all. So y'all check them products out. Check out Agerson's whole portfolio. They've got several more. They've got extract. They've got uh, two or three others. I can't remember them all. But y'all check them out. Uh, they've been a huge sponsor to the channel uh, all summer. Uh, I had the pleasure, me and Aaron both, of going to the research facility and touring the research facility and uh, seeing what it's all about. But that's another thing you know when a company opens their research and development up for you to see you can pretty much bet that it's uh on point and it was so y'all check agerson out and uh anything else no just be watching for that last bell video because i'm ready ready to record it yep still how many bells have you done so far Thirty-four thousand. how many Thirty-four thousand. 34,000. How many think you projected, Jen? Probably a little over 45. All right, 45. Now, say 45,000. I'm going to say 47,000. Never happened. Never happened. Never. I'm going to say, here is my guess 44,826. And she'll probably hit it really really close because she knows exactly how much cotton's out there and she runs the math and she she's probably gonna hit it i just said forty-seven thousand just to spite that's it but uh you know there's still a lot of ginning to do here guys this thing runs 24 hours a day seven days a week um everybody's getting really tired and really grouchy and really sick of seeing each other so yeah yeah it, it's usually by this time of the season we're getting down, ready to go to one shift, waiting for trucks to finish hauling in. Not this year. Yeah, that's the thing. Is now the gin is starting to get wore down. Uh, like the saws are getting wore down. The other equipment in there, the brushes are getting wore down. So things are things are not running like uh, uh, it really should. Uh, I know they had a lot of trouble with the flashing today. Uh, two days we were down with flashing on the battery condenser. Two days. So, yeah, it was down most of the night last night. They they shut down at 1 o'clock this morning to do to put the back side of the flashing on the drums of the condenser, which is a huge job. Um, and he was down, I think we got it started about 9 o'clock this morning. Yeah. So, you know, I've, I, I've come over here a couple nights and, and done some welding for him. Uh, so, you know, it's all hands on deck here. So, I'd say that, yeah, y'all are going to have to go over in January, aren't you? Uh, last week, I thought we could possibly, if we worked Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, we could get it done, but there's no way now. We're, we're fixing to have to take probably a day to change saws. So. Yeah. yeah, I was fixing to say it's about time to change saws. But, yeah, they're, they're going to have to go on over into January. So, you know, with the, they work Thanksgiving here uh right on through never stopped and you will shut down for christmas won't you well i i was really worried about what we were going to do if we were going to be close i figured we might shut down for christmas day but we'd probably work christmas eve but if we're going to go into january i personally think that we should take christmas eve christmas day and the day after off and new year's um it's not like we're going to be now last year we did work new year's eve um we had a yeah. farmer december 31st is our electric date um, it's going to cost us roughly around $30,000 in a demand to go in to go over January the 1st another month, which we did not want to do, but there's nothing we can do about it. So, but last year we did work New Year's Eve. Um, we did take off several days after New Year's, but I, I'm really hoping 
that my dad will see the same as I do if we're going to go into January. There's no use of making these. These guys need a day off. Yeah. They need a day off. Yeah, there's no good mornings over here anymore. It's, it's what's the good about it? Yeah, everybody's... You can just imagine working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no days off, for four months. Which we, my guys work 84 hours. They work 12, yeah. 7, 12. So they, everybody's getting, about this time every year, everybody starts getting kind of, now I'm not going to say we're going to have a great family Christmas because we've all seen each other. So I'm just kidding, we will. But it's, everybody's getting a little grouchy. We had sickness here three weeks ago. Everybody had COVID. Yeah, everybody. It, and we were all sick. I was sick. Um, was having to work 14, 15 hours a day because we, I, my girl that works in the office up there, it's probably the hardest two days of work that I've ever worked. But we made it through it. Um, so er, everybody's getting pretty wore down. Yeah. Her dad was sick. Aaron was sick. Her mom was sick. I was sick. Uh, Nicole, she was no, she wasn't sick. No, Nicole, no my sister-in-law brother, and a couple other people. I think they must have been asymptomatic. We didn't know we had COVID until we were all almost over it. When the one of the ladies up in the office called and she'd been sick for a few days and said she ended up in the hospital. We didn't even. I mean, I really thought I had the flu. My back hurt really bad. Um, it got bad one afternoon. I. At 3.45, I had to lock the door down here and go lay down in the recliner in the back because I could not hold my head up anymore. Slept for an hour and a half and then went back and worked till 10 or 11 o'clock that night up there. So it's one of those things, even if you're sick, you got to keep going. The only thing I think could probably get us down might be a stomach virus. I don't think you could yeah. handle that and work. But most of my guys, it went, it went through the whole... Yeah, went through the whole gin. Got us all. But anyhow, Molly, you ready to go home? She says, no, I like being at work with my mom. She is supposed to be Eric's dog, but she's turned into Aaron's dog. She Where's a good girl, ain't you, Mom? Nope, mm. oh, thank you, my mama. Hi, baby. <laughs> Hi. She's super spoiled rotten, but uh, I just want to come over here tonight and go over all this with you guys, show you about precision planning, Talk about the winter conference. Let you know I'm going to be there in January, in Memphis, Tennessee, in January. And I uh, wanted to go over all my yield data with you guys, show it to you, be exposed, so to speak. And uh, maybe you learned something out of it. My, I, hope, I hope maybe you learned something from, uh, just from what I've done this year. Uh, I'm looking forward to 2024. Uh, we're going to try some new things. Uh, we're going to cut back on some things, and uh, we're going to get pumped up by the new year. So uh, with that, I think me and Aaron are going to go home. You guys, don't forget about the merch store. Go check it out. Don't forget about precision planning, and don't forget about checking out Agerson. So, Molly girl, you tell, guys, tell everybody in YouTube, let's go home. Mm, you ready to go? All right, guys, we're going to get out of here. Y'all have a good night and uh, Merry Christmas. And uh, don't forget to comment down below what you want to see uh, me put out videos on. So we're out of here.